Good morning and welcome back to Emmett Grove Baptist Sunday School Hour. We're delighted to be here this morning with God's Word and continuing on in our study of, of God's will. And we've looked at that uh, in depth as we move into God's will of His command, the things that He desires us to, uh, to live by. Uh, and so uh, this morning we'll, we'll look at some verses over in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, but before we give that scripture, that is Pastor Tim uh, uh, taught me the other day, the address of that scripture. Never thought about that being the address in the Bible. But uh, of those scriptures, we'll go to, to the Lord in prayer and ask for his blessings on this uh on this uh, uh, lesson this morning. So, Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that you're the God of truth. You're, uh, Lord, you're the way, uh, uh, the truth, and the life. And uh, these covers about everything we need uh, in those three things, God. And we thank you this morning. I thank you for your will. I thank you that you sent Jesus to explain yourself and, and God to give us the, the wisdom of God and um, and to know your will, Lord. It's just so important. And uh, we give you thanks for this great study you've given us and how deep it is and how it keeps expanding um, from Sunday to Sunday, uh, thinking we're going to be done in two weeks. And then, Lord, you turn that into months. And uh, you always have been the multiplier. Um, the enemy divides, but you multiply. And we praise your name. God, today, and I pray you take this word and speak through me as unworthy as I am to forgive me of the sins of my life and uh, this day, and uh, God, that I might just be a vessel, that I might speak what you would have me to speak. Uh, thank you for giving me the light to understand your word, and uh, the Lord, to, to begin to understand it in any way, and, and be able to present it in such a way that we, we understand about you, uh, our, our uh, importance and dependence on you, and Lord, that we need you, and then we look into our own hearts. Uh, and the, and the, the Word of God is the mirror, Lord, uh, of, of reflecting who you are. But, Lord, we don't, in our own lives, don't see much of you. And we did, we desire that. So help us. This is about our walk. And it's very important to you. This, this is for your chosen people. And so, God, have your way. We love you. We thank you. And, and these things, we, uh, we glorify Jesus' name and ask for, you, for your help. Uh, and, and so we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, continuing in our study, um, again, we, uh, the address that we just mentioned, we're going to give it to you now is in 1 Thessalonians, and it's 5, uh, chapter 5, it's verses uh, 16 through 18, and most people that have studied the Bible for any length of time have know these verses, you may not could know what it was when we, when we gave you the scripture, but when you turn over there and look, you say, yes, I've heard this before. Very, very simple verses, very short verses in a sense, but they are packed. Paul could write in such a way through God's Spirit. Um, this is about Christian conduct, and we just plucked these three verses kind of uh, in, in the midst of a really verses 12 down through 24. Uh, and it's just interesting that this is right in the heart of those verses and certainly is a, um, uh, uh, you know, um, advice or commands that God gives us here uh, through Paul of how to live our life. Uh, remember, this is to Christians. This is for those that have been called out, the chosen. Um, uh, so let's just read these verses, and we're going to just kind of, we're going to stay right here, very simply put. Uh, we will be looking at some verses in Philippians, and so we'll we'll look at those. Uh, 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 but uh, and it's interesting that Thessalonica uh, and uh, uh, those at Philippi, uh, those churches are very close together uh, up on the north end of the GNC uh, churches that uh, Paul, I believe Paul started those churches. I know he ministered to them because these letters are written to them. Um, but anyway, this letter written to to the to the uh, uh, to Thessal the church at Thessal uh, Thessalonia, uh, we are uh, Thessalonica. That is. Uh, we read these verses in 16 through 18. Now listen to this. Re very, like I say, very short, simple verses. Rejoice always. Uh, that's, that's a verse. Uh, verse 17, listen to this. Pray without ceasing. Man, uh, we might have some questions to ask there. And then 18. Uh, and all of this is in, kind of in one breath. All 16, 17, and 18. And in everything, notice that, in everything give thanks. Uh, those are th those are the three things. Now, here's the reason. Here's the reason. Here's the reason we rejoice. Here's the reason we pray. Uh, here's the reason we give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's that's really what drew us to this scripture was God's will 
That's what we're looking at here, God's will of command. This is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. If he didn't put in there in Christ, it could be just reaching out to, to all people. But he's saying this is specifically for believers because these things are done. We pray, we rejoice, we give thanks because of Christ, because we're in him, because uh, he abides in us and we abide in him. And so we'll kind of break this down using that. Now, I don't want to, I'm just anxious to go into 19 and 20 and 21 and those verses beyond that. But for the sake of this morning, we're going to stay right here on these three. Uh, what, you're going to, what we're going to find out, I think, the way God is leading us in his will of command uh, is, is that we're going to be circling back around a lot of these things. A lot of these things, we, we, we wrote down some things a week or two ago. Last week, I think it was, I wrote down 10 things of God's will of command quickly. Uh, salvation, sanctification, being spirit filled, self-sacrifice, submitting, perseverance, persevering in hard times, submission to authorities, uh, our suffering. Uh, uh, this would be for our uh, persecution for our faith, thankfulness, uh, contentment, and to be praying. So today we're, we're already going to look at three or three of these odd things that we talked about on this list, but we're going to go more in depth. So today is, again, we're Last week we talked about it being an introduction, but this is where we're just moving toward these subjects that we'll get more involved in. So uh, we'll be circling back around these things uh, is the whole point of what I was trying to say here. Um, uh, speaking of these verses, we know they're written for, for Christian conduct. And remember last week we looked at Ephesians 5.17, and it kind of ended in such a way that it says that we know what the will is. We practice these things so we, so that we will know what the will of, of the Lord is. And we kind of use that as our theme, understanding what the will of the Lord is. And these things we listed, that's what they are. Uh, so the verses this morning that Paul writes here, that we're fixing to break down in just a minute, uh, uh, d directs our hearts uh, and our lives uh, to the duties uh, of of. of, of of the most importance to God. This is God's will, the way he wants us to live. So he's directing us in a sense here. Uh, uh, what we'll see here is how these three things, uh, 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 rejoicing and praying and, and being thankful are connected together. Almost if you think of a chain, uh, well, one holds the other together and one leads to the other. We'll kind of, But they kind of come full circle in a sense. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we uh, as we uh, as we move along here, I wrote a note here. They are, they're very unified. Everything in God's word is unified. His spirit holds things together. Uh, it uh, supports uh, one one uh, uh, virtue supports the other, and and you almost can't leave one out. Um, um, I wrote down here a note that uh, uh, these are some of the fibers that make up the the peace of God. They're they're, they're they they hold together and they give the peace of God a. I want to flip over to Philippians just a minute before we start in verse 16 and, and, and read Philippians 4, 9 to you uh, to, 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 to give you how this is connected to God's peace. And uh, in a minute, we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit because this is really what they are. But Paul would, would is closing on, uh, uh, on a section here in Philippians 4. Again, one of those churches very close in the vicinity of, of the church at, at Thessalonica. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen, that's a lot, in me. In other words, what Paul was, was doing, the way he lived his life, these are things uh, uh, that we, and he goes on to say here, that you've seen in me, practice these things, put them into practice. Remember, we, well, I spoke at the prayer breakfast, a couple of things I want to bring up concerning there, uh, but practice is habitual, doing things over and over, practice these things, and here's what he says the result will be, and the and the God of peace will be with you. Uh, that's what it's all about, is having peace of God. Well, our salvation brings us peace with God. This is in Romans. We can find that, I believe, over in chapter 5. Uh, and then we experience, once we are begin to, to, to live out our salvation, um, our, which is our sanctification, and that's one of those things we'll be lifting. We'll be talking about that soon in the next week or two. Uh, we began to, to, to practice those things, put those things uh, 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 in, into, into practice. Uh, then we have the peace of God, peace with God in salvation, peace of God as we live. So let's, let's just move into these verses. And I don't, I don't think this will be a long study this morning, uh, 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 but we'll let God have his way in it. Verse 16, we'll go back and read that. Three, three, three words, rejoice, 
always. Two words, rejoice always. The second one is three, uh, but, but rejoice always. Um, uh, rejoice. Uh, the word joy comes to mind when we think of rejoice. Uh, uh, I, I believe my definition that God gave me this week in, in, in this study was that rejoicing is an expression of our joy. Uh, we, we have joy, but when we rejoice, we, it's an outpouring. We begin to give thanks and praise and these things that we do. And you start to see the chain of these three things, how they're hooked together. Uh, this, this, this rejoice is, 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 a, is, is spiritual joy. It's joy in, in our salvation. Um, you've often heard this. I think about that movie. It's a great movie. It really is called The, the Pursuit of Happiness. There's a lot of people out there that are pursuing happiness, but happiness is a very fickle thing. It's some, most of the time very, they're very um, te uh, temporal. It doesn't last very long. Uh, and it, the one thing that about happiness is that, and, and, you, and, and every now and again, you'll see that in the Bible. You'll see the word happy uh, in there, but it depends on circumstances and circumstances depend a lot of times on people. And we don't put any faith in the flesh, uh, uh, you know, we put our faith in, in the Lord. Um, uh, they're dependent on, on the way things play out, and, and sometimes they don't. You know, and, and what we think that would make us happy, we soon see that it fades away. It, does, it just doesn't last. It's not eternal um, in the sense of, of spiritual things. But this is spiritual joy. This is different. Joy depends on God. <laughs> we can trust Him. We know that His Word is true. And it's uh, it, it, we can we can certainly uh, trust him in his word. Um, over in Philippians, well, speaking of joy, if if I'm rejoicing always, we got to remember that too. It's always um, rejoicing if I'm expressing my joy in what God gives me, not not in my circumstances, because Paul is going to uh, over in, in Philippians again as he as he gives these words, he's going to talk about being joyful. Um, even when we're being persecuted, look at, let's read Philippians, uh, um, two, 17 and 18. But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice. He's talking about being persecuted and, uh, uh, and, you know, Paul went through a lot of things. Uh, he wrote down some of the things that he was, uh, of his persecutions and, uh, and his beatings and floggings and things that he had poured out as a drink offering. He was, he was sacrificing. That's one of the things he said, self-sacrifice self over here in God's will. But he said, I rejoice. He, he said, to serve with your face, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. Uh, and then he says in 18 that you too, I urge you, rejoice, there it is, uh, in the same way and share your joy with me, and, and share in these sufferings. So it's about suffering. It's not always about good things. We're, we're going to be talking about being thankful in just a minute um, in that. Um, he uh, moves on, and at 3.1, he talks about this. Finally, my brethren, Philippians 3.1, uh, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Uh, so rejoice is redundant here in the Bible over and over and over. Uh, uh, again, not happiness, but but joy. Uh, uh, in, in fact, um Joy is one of the fruit of the spirits. In fact, when we, if you go to Galatians five twenty two, uh, joy. Now we're talking about rejoice, but the two you have to connect joy. Uh, 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 the expression of joy is 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 rejoicing. We just said that, and we may say it again. We need to know this thing. Uh, in fact, look at this, uh, Philippians three one. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. And here's what he added to that. And I love this. I really do. I, I brought this up not long ago in Bible study. To write the same thing again is no trouble to me. Uh, and it is a safeguard. So repeating things are really good. Paul understood this. And we need to understand. That's why we need to read the Bible over and over and over. And uh, you don't just read it one time and you're done. It's, it's, you have to be reminded. We are uh, forgetful people. We really are. Uh, 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 but joy is the second of the fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians 5.22. Uh, and certainly that is that is the the, the guideline that the God the God's will of, that we would possess these things these virtues really what they are um, uh, so we see these things rejoicing I was reading again another testimony reading through the Bible and how God lines up what he what he's reading what we're reading and what he's given me as a as a uh, Sunday school teacher when I'm searching for things and and one of my favorite verses uh when the uh, when he sent out the seventy uh, disciples in Luke ten, 
and uh, he told them to go out, not take any money. And uh, very, it's very simple, uh, very similar to when he sent the twelve apostles out. But this is different. This is, I think, a little later. Uh, sent the seventy out and, and told them not to take any money and don't take any shoes, don't take anything. Go and you stay in one house. And you know, if you're rejected, you know, shake the dust off your feet, off your sandals, and uh, and, uh, and and move on. And uh, and so they came back and they were reporting to Jesus. Man, we cast out demons. It was amazing. And 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 uh, uh, matter of fact, I want to just go there a minute in Luke ten. Uh, it fits so perfectly with what what we uh, are discussing this morning uh, about what we really ought to be rejoicing over. Um, but uh, immediately Jesus said, gave a, just an amazing scripture here. I've it's been highlighted in my Bible for quite some time. Seventeen says the seventy return with joy. There it is, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. That's an amazing. I, he, in other words, an affirmation of God's deity that he was there uh, before Satan fell, before he was cast out. He, he says here, I saw him fall from heaven. He was cast out of heaven like a flash of lightning. That's how fast he was He was gone from there. Uh so in 19, Jesus said, Behold, I have, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, uh, and nothing will injure you. In other words, he's the power of God he had given them, and, and it was being displayed through them. Uh, but 20 is the verse. Listen to what Jesus said here. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. Even the miracles, there's, there's a higher, there's something bigger. Uh, last night, Tim was saying, Focus on the bigger things, not the smaller things. These, certainly none of this is small, but listen to what he says here. Don't rejoice in that, that, you, that the spirits are subject to you. Here's what you rejoice over today. Rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Now, there it is. Rejoice that your names are in heaven. Rejoice, rejoice that you are saved. That takes precedence over any miracle, any even casting out of demons, very interesting set of scripture in Luke 10, 17 through 20. It's a good go-to. You can that, that scripture is applied to could be applied to many things in the Bible. So we we look at that, and when Jesus gives us the priority, you rejoice for your salvation. Now let's move to 17. Because without that, without that joy, uh you will never be drawn into to this uh, this really fascinating verse of pray without ceasing. Rejoice always, in verse 17, pray without ceasing. Uh, uh, wrote down here, this is the continual, habitual, those two things, the habit of doing something over and over. Uh, practice is that, that other word of prayer is generated from the previous verse. Remember we said they're connected. If I'm rejoicing that my name is written in, in, the, in the books, that, that they are recorded in heaven, then I'm going to be drawn to talking to God, to praying. Uh, to him, so they they're connected in such a way uh, that the joy in Jesus and His salvation draws me to a closer relationship, and then I want to talk to Him. I just want to have conversation with Him. We've been praying through seven hundred and seventy-seven hours, and I myself just got up from praying out under the stars if just a few minutes ago to come in to, to record this. That prayer is that way that we draw ourselves closer to God. I'll never. Don't think I'll ever forget it. I've, I've quoted it in a in a Bible study uh, in a devotion a few days ago, and uh, that Greg Frizzell that wrote the How to Have a Powerful Prayer Life wrote that your that your uh, your relationship with Jesus Christ is never going to rise uh, or going to rise any higher than your relationship with Jesus. In other words, if I ain't pray, if I'm not praying, I'm not going to be drawn to Jesus. That my that uh, that my relationship with Jesus is never going to rise any higher, higher than my prayer life. I don't know if I said it the right way, but that was the right way. My prayer life is my indicator uh, and barometer of how close I am to the Lord. Uh, and prayer is that way to draw close to Jesus. Now, let's talk about praying for just a minute. Two things here uh, about prayer. Uh, and from my Matthew Henry commentary, he had very good commentary on that. And I don't go to much commentary, but. I was kind of drawn to this, and uh, Brother Logan, by the way, is is going to be teaching this lesson in person Sunday, and I would ask you to pray for him, for guidance, for God's uh, power uh, through His Spirit to lead. And so I was helping him with some notes, and and uh, and I just looked at the commentary there and drew drew for some that and some thoughts that God gave me. Uh, but Matthew Henry says two things here about this prayer. It's about 
keeping up with stated times. In other words, you got to have prayer time. Well, you got to have a time every day to go to God, and multiple times is certainly good, but at least once a day to sit down with God in His Word, uh, to read His Word and to pray and to give Him. And Cindy and I try to do that. And we've been doing that for several years, and and we have our time. Um, uh, some days it's more quality than it is others, but we, we we try to sit down and give him some time. Stated times, that would, uh, Matthew Henry kind of wrote, uh, I believe he was an Englishman, and he wrote kind of in a certain way, but stated times are basically times that we've set aside in prayer. You've got to give God time. you got to give him time to do that. One of the lessons we learned in the 777 hours is that we commit to a, a certain day and a certain time, and we stick to it. But we we're basically giving God that one hour. This is your hour. This is almost like a sense of like fasting. We're, we're going to give up, Lord, what we were going to do, and we're going to sit and pray to you and give you that time. Um, sweet hour of prayer. When Mike, <laughs> Mike Smith always uh, talks about that when we talk about praying, a sweet hour of prayer. We've got to make time. Also, uh, not only is it stated times of prayer, the second thing here that he, that he uh, in his commentary was that we continue, and he called it instant prayer. And I get this. Uh, I call it the Nehemiah Nehemiah prayer. Uh, over in Nehemiah two, uh, uh, verse four, Nehemiah was um, he was uh, burdened. Uh, Israel had been in captivity, and now they were beginning to uh, God's uh, uh, prophecy which was coming true, and they were uh, Israel was returning. Uh, um, from Babylon, they were turning back to uh, uh, to Israel to rebuild. And Nehemiah had a heart for the wall. Remember, the wall was all torn down, and and uh, and he really was hurting and uh, and mourning and praying to God. And so he got the he got up the nerve. God gave him the the the, the uh, courage to go before King Artaxerxes. Remember, those kings were very fickle, and you could ask them, and if they were having a bad day, they could basically just put you have you put to death. He was the cupbearer there, so he went before the Lord. He was scared to death. He was absolutely scared to death to, to go up there, but he went. He went, uh, and, and, uh, and he, he had courage, and so it says in Nehemiah 2.4 that he prayed while he was standing right in front of him. Pray, I call it praying on the fly. Uh, instant prayer, always being ready to pray. And I think, really, uh, you know, that's really what this praying without ceasing means, uh, you say, well, God, that just means that I, that's all I do. No, it's not exactly what it means. Uh, I wrote a note. doesn't mean that we do nothing but praying. That's a good thought. Um, but rather that we have the right heart and the right attitude to pray when God calls. Uh, that, that we never cease, listen, we never cease to be ready to pray uh, when when the need comes, that we we keep our hearts prayer ready. That's a good word, good phrase uh, to, to be ready. That's what part of what I believe he means by praying without ceasing. Um, I wrote a personal note kind of from my experience and in, uh, in reading this word and being inspired by God's spirit that, that this praying without ceasing, there is the practice of prayer, of sitting there praying, and, and it really is just talking to God. It really is. Uh, uh, but this mindset of praying, of of communing with God, talking with Him, keeps us with a, with a continual God consciousness. You understand that? Always, you, you ever you ever done this? You ever get out and get busy and get wrapped up in things with people and things, and all of a sudden you just you realize you two or three hours or half a day you hadn't thought a thing about God. Well, praying and and having this praying without ceasing attitude in a in a prayerful heart keeps you God conscious. Um, uh, throughout your day, you know, and it's uh, it, it's just just interesting to me how that how God can use His Spirit to do that keeps us on the paths of righteousness. Remember this great Psalm twenty three three uh, that He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Where you want to be, folks, uh, and keeps us ready to pray any time for any need. I, I love it when when I get a call or a text and. It's, uh, and somebody says, you know, we need prayer. Somebody got hurt or sick or whatever. Uh, somebody's good doing this or doing that. Please pray. I, we're just so blessed to be in a church with a with a good prayer chain and uh, people that that you can call on that'll pray most any time. And I'll give you a great example. We were doing this. We were doing the uh, devotion at the men's prayer breakfast just this past um, uh, Saturday, and we were well, we were. Uh, uh, speaking on prayer and the importance of it and i was just sharing some personal relay uh, uh personal 
testimony of how God's moved in my life and prayer uh, and the importance of it. And, and, you know, you don't really know how dependent you are on it until you begin to pray. And then, uh, and, and then maybe you stumble a little bit and you don't pray and you go, what's wrong with me? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong. You're just you're getting out of God's will, not praying, uh, because you know the, the importance of prayer and God's giving you light. And, uh, and he's not going to give you any more light until you uh, uh, certainly uh, um, honor the light that he has given you. So what I'm saying is when you fall back from it, you know something's not right. And it's not going to take long to figure out what it is. So we're giving this devotion. Uh, Pastor Tim sitting in the middle of the crowd almost, it seems like from what I would remember, and he raised his hand. Um, and, uh, and that's good because sometimes Tim can really uh, give you some good insight through God's spirit. But that particular time was that a brother that needed prayer uh, uh, text Pastor Tim and said, pray for me. I need prayer. Something's come up unexpectedly, and I need to, I've need been asked to speak uh, for the Lord, and I'm unprepared. So we just stopped. We put everything on hold, and, and Pastor Tim asked me to pray. So we prayed for, for, for Ryan French, that, he, that God would give him the words, and that's what praying without ceasing. I don't know if there's not a greater better example illustration of praying without ceasing being ready to pray okay pray without ceasing it's scary when we look at that lord i can't pray without ceasing yes you can you have a god conscious mindset of, of remember this is for believers you and you someone that's not saved doesn't have god's spirit and never be able to even come close to it can't even comprehend it uh but with god all things are possible right and uh, we know that to be true so being prayer ready praying without ceasing now let's move on to to verse 18. Let's break this verse down. This is, uh, 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 let's, let's just listen to this verse here. Let's back up and, and catch it all together. Let's connect it all back together. Rejoice always, verse 16. Pray without ceasing, verse 17. Verse 18, in everything, uh, just like rejoice always, pray, uh, excuse me, in everything, in everything, give thanks in everything, give thanks. Now, let's just stop. I'm just going to break that verse down in half. I wrote an 18A and an 18B. And um, and I don't know what that ABC thing is, but I've seen it before. I've even seen it written in my concordance. So I, to, to break a verse off is kind of what I do. I start putting letters in there. Uh, we, we never should do that, but there's so much in these verses. Sometimes you have to do that. So in everything, give thanks. Uh, this is what Paul is writing to us and telling us here. Everything. Uh, so we see this chain. Uh, connected prayer, uh, joy in our salvation draws us to prayer, and then prayer when we begin to pray draws us to a thankful heart. When you begin to pray, and let me tell you about prayer. You need to learn to pray the names of God because it really, it really just illuminates uh, God's uh, characters, His attributes, and you begin to see how great a God He is. And then, uh, and then mercy and grace come to mind, and and that just begins to draw us to a thankful heart. Uh, it's a crucial part of prayer, by the way, and giving praise and thanksgiving. Um, and so thanksgiving certainly uh, is kind of created in a sense, a come about from, from one that prays. And we can't forget these things. Um, you know, Greg Frizzell, the, the same man that I just mentioned that read, said that your, that your relationship with Jesus is never going to rise any higher in your prayer life, had this to say. He says, when we get our praise right, and I like to say praise and thanksgiving, I know there you can praise God, but you're really almost thanking Him that He is God and that you know Him. Uh, so these two are like holding hands together, praising Thanksgiving. But He says when we get our praise right, he, God is even quicker to answer our prayer. And because uh, I'm telling you, if we're thankful people. Uh, uh, you know, He gives He gives a greater grace. He gives a greater grace over in James. I love that. Uh, there's grace, and then there's a greater grace uh, uh, that we give. Be thankful. Uh, I wrote down here as, as a personal note uh, to give here that we really missed the mark. You know what that is, don't you? That's sin. No, man, oh, we don't want to talk about sin. Well, we have to because we're marred in it and uh, and uh, we'll be until we get our glorified bodies. But we really missed the mark when we fail to give thanks to God. Uh, boy, how many times have we prayed for something and God answers and, and either our thank you is just very, very quick and short and uh, but God, we have, we we have to remember to be thankful for answered prayers, even when it's not th the answer we want. We have to. Uh, that's why he says in everything. He didn't say just thank God when things are good. Uh, anybody can do that. Um, we we just we have to be mindful of everything God answers, uh, and and look that it is the answer and be aware of it. Brother Paul and I like to think of it as the dots. 
the, the you know, when you was a little kid, you had these little things on, on paper that had these dots, and you went from dot to dot to dot to dot, and you don't know what it is. You see a bunch of dots, but you you draw a line from one dot to the next dot to the next dot, and then, uh, you know, I used to remember doing that and, and thinking, like you get, you, you almost think you know. I know what it is. I know what it is, and that's what God does. He, he just gives you these dots, you know, and you connect them, and then all of a sudden you see the big picture. Uh, again, thinking about last night at prayer meeting, you know, looking at the bigger things. What's the bigger picture here? It takes a lot of these little dots to make a picture. Sometimes you got to kind of follow them. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and so here it is um, that that He's talking. Give thanks and everything. We so we miss the mark. We sin when we fail to give thanks. Uh, to God for the things that he does, uh, the, the dots. P Brother Paul and I share that uh, together a lot. He said, I, another dot, you know, and we, I know what that is. It's kind of a little personal thing between us. Uh, do, do we have a thankful heart? And I've often said this. This is why it's my personal note, because this is my testimony, that a thankful heart is a worshiping heart. If you're thankful to God, you're going to worship him, and that's really, what he, that's really what he desires. He desires that glory. So you see how this chain kind of fits together? You see these things? Um, uh, it's just inter it's just fascinating how P God's word just flows together like it does. So let's close right here with uh, uh let me I got a note here in Philippians four six. Let's see what um what what uh what Paul wrote to, in Philippi uh, uh, Philippi. Here it is. Uh, speaking of 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 joy uh in in of thanks, uh, he says here um. Well, that's in Ephesians. Let's get back over to the right book, Marlon. Um. Four six says this: Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about things. Remember, we're looking for bigger things. But in everything, there it is. Same thing you wrote in eighteen. Uh, but but in everything by prayer. Wow, we just talked about that. And supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. That kind of verse kind of summarizes the whole lesson here. Uh, that's Philippians four six. I've seen that verse on the back of people's cars and. In their windows, the window. I like. Don't you love to see that? Go down the road and you see a Bible verse. I tell Cindy when we see one. I said, look up that verse and tell me what it is. Uh, you know, I want to know what it is. Uh, it's just good to see, you know, holy things out in the world. So much wickedness. It's just good to see that. Uh, uh, by the way, don't put Jesus saves or a Jesus man on your bumper and then go acting like a fool in your car. You know what I mean? Don't do that. <laughs> That's not. That works the opposite. You, you're giving the enemy some. Uh, some 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 victory there. Don't don't do that. If you're gonna put a verse on you on your car, certainly live it out. And um, and that's just a, that's just good advice. So uh, here here we close out. We, we we've we we've we know we need to rejoice always. We know we need to pray without ceasing and have a prayerful heart. Uh, then we need to be thankful for God. And this is kind of summarizes it up. The last part of eighteen, and we'll kind of close with this last little section here of this verse. And this is what drew us to this verse in the beginning. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is God's will uh, in Jesus and our salvation that these things be uh, in our life, that we exhibit these things and, and we're shown. This is our walk. Remember what our walk was is our life, how we live our life, the decisions we make, the attitudes we have, and how we live it out. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That is in his salvation. Um, my salvation which I wrote down here is God's gift of allowing or causing me and you knowing to see the light, to know that I'm a sinner and I got no way out. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm in a bad way. I'm in a bad way and I, I need help and I need his grace. Uh, pastor Tim, um, the, the over in, um, uh, the story of Lydia and acts when God opened her heart and we've been praying in, in our 777 hours, are a lot of names on there that, that, quite possibly may not know God, may not know Jesus. And uh, we were praying that God would open hearts, and that's what he does to, to so the light shines in and illuminates the dark. Uh, reading about that today, about the eye. Uh, uh, the, the eye is, is the gateway to the light coming in. Um, but open hearts um, draws me genuinely to do these, these things. The God's will, listen to this, in Christ, that I can rejoice, that I can pray, and I can give thanks. And these things got to be, they, they need to be a part of your everyday life. I'm telling you, every day we all need to exhibit some of these things. Uh, and it needs to be genuine. This is not a fake, <laughs> you know, you see people just smiling. You just see a, a cheesy smile, you know what I mean? But that's, but that's not the way we are. Let's be genuine just because of who God is. Um, and uh, and don't think you can hide anything from God. You're not going to 
you might fool some people, but you're never going to fool God. And uh, several things in the times in the Bible that God, that Jesus Himself would get excited because people spoke their heart. They were they were real. Think about Nathaniel when he came, uh, and they said, "We found Messiah." And they said, "He's from He's from Nazareth." And and uh, Nathaniel, you know, he's thinking about the the wickedness there. And you know, it's interesting that Jesus would would be raised up in Nazareth, what, just a terrible place, and kind of way it was in his ministry wasn't it he, he was always going in where the sinners were and going into the places that the pharisees but uh were, were chastising him and you know he uh, he eats with sinners and he you know whatever and prostitutes and but uh but he was raised up in nazareth but just a bad town and so anyway uh nathaniel said what good can come out of nazareth i mean what this it's just a bad place you know and and so he said that to i think it was to andrew uh, so when they later on when they brought him to Jesus, Jesus already knew what he was thinking, uh, and he said something like this. He said, "And is and uh, uh, he said, behold, an Israelite in whom there's no deceit." <laughs> he was just, you know, Nathaniel just spoke his heart, and, and uh, uh, as a matter of fact, he he uh, he said something about knowing him. He said, "How do you know me?" And he, uh, Nathaniel had gone and prayed under the fig tree. Remember that? And and he said, "I saw you praying under the." Uh, the fig tree and so you know he was revealing to Nathaniel that he could read his mind which he, he knew he's Elroy he knows the hearts of man just very interesting there uh, uh, of that story of, of, of Nathaniel um, uh, so we look at these things these three things that bring us that, 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 that you know bring they bring glory to God uh, that we that we pray without ceasing we give thanks for everything good and bad whatever our circumstances are um, uh, thanks, prayer, rejoice, uh, because this is God's will. And these three things will always bring glory to God. They always will. And they always will, will be a, a kind of complimenting each other. Um, and, uh, John over in first John three twenty two, we read this verse. Uh, I believe we read it at the, at the prayer breakfast, uh, uh, about pleasing God. You'll see that, that phrase throughout scripture. I want to read this one verse right here about prayer. Uh, here's what John wrote, 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 22. And whatever we ask, there's praying, we receive from him um, because we keep his commandments, because I'm obedient, you know, and I'm striving to be obedient. These things are also proofs of our salvation, by the way. And do the things that are pleasing in his sight. So if I'm rejoicing, uh, if, if I'm praying without ceasing, um, uh, if I'm giving thanks, then I, those are things that are pleasing to God. And that's what you want to do. You want to live your life in such a way. So what great verses on our walk, our Christian conduct, and, and the God, the will. The, remember the two meanings of God's will, the whole big thing here. His sovereign will, things that, that, that'll, that will take place, that God has planned to take place. And we can't stop them, and they will take place. Um, and they will uh, uh, in his due time. Now, God's Second meaning of God's will is is God's will of command, what we talked about today, what he desires us to do. That does not always happen. I read a note last week that, that God's sovereign will is always happening, and it's just, just, it's just a fact. That's the way God's going to do these things. We don't know. Sometimes they're secret. We don't even know what they are. We don't know what tomorrow hold, holds. Uh, 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 so they're always happening. Well, God's will of command, what he desires to do, that's not always happening because I'm not always obedient. I'm not always doing what I ought to do. You know, the flesh gets in the way. I love it the way Pastor Tim framed the way Satan strategizes. I've got this written down here, and I keep looking at it. The two ways that he messes with us, he, he messes with us, the devil does, by influencing the flesh, influence, and by interference. I understand those completely. He can influence us or he can interfere. He can interfere with God's work through his spirit, or he can influence us through the world and cause us to stumble. And we talked about those stumbling blocks last night, uh, those two ways. Uh, uh, so we want to live obedient. We want to live by his will of his command, by what he tells us and how he does, so we can be pleasing in his sight. Uh, and those rewards we talked about for two or three months uh, that we store up in, in heaven. So next week, we're going to talk about salvation, not necessarily in God's sovereign will, that He that is, it is his choice who he will call. Uh, and there's going to be people, folks, that he's not going to call. He's just not. We have to go back and look at that lesson again. But this is about God's desire that, that he wishes that no no one, he would never have sent Jesus to the cross if, if, if his will wasn't for, for every person to be saved. But we know the fact that he's not, okay? We, we just got to understand that and accept it. So we're going to talk about salvation. God's will of command is that we be saved. 
Matthew 7, 21, 1 Timothy 2, uh, verses 3 and 4, and John 6, 40. We're going to look at those verses of salvation, but we're going to begin in Ephesians. And we're going to look at God's plan of salvation, uh, Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. That's where we're going to start. We're going to look at the layout of God's salvation. This was God's plan for man, uh, his desires for us, how he did it. It's a beautiful set of verses, 12 verses, 13 verses here. Uh, 11 verse, whatever it is. It's 3, verse 3 to verse 14, first chapter of Ephesians. And then we're going to work and off of that and show you some verses where it is God's will that we be saved. So remember, we're looking at God's will of command, the things that he desires for us to live by and the outcome of them. Uh, there's always a good outcome when we're obedient. So next week, that's what we'll look at. So we'll close a little early uh, on this lesson in First Thessalonians. And, uh, and uh, pray that God is moved and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, close in a short prayer. Father God, we do thank you for your word. I thank you for your commands, uh, your desires for us. Uh, in Christ, it's always about that, Lord. And there is not much hope for those apart. There is none, really. Uh, even those trying to live a good life, uh, no, Lord, just don't ever succeed without Christ. And so we, we give you thanks for that, for the light for opening our hearts and seeing them. We pray for those that don't know you, that they might see this and go, what is he talking about? Well, Lord, I pray that you would show them what we're talking about, and uh, they won't ever get it unless you help them. So uh, God, help us in our walk, uh, those of us that are in Christ, uh, uh, and these things, uh, Lord, that we would always be uh, have a joyful heart, rejoice, uh, and uh, in God, that we would pray without ceasing, and we would always be thankful. And we know that these are your will for us in our life. It brings you glory. God, and what, a, what a great way to be able to do that. Uh, uh, and it's all about you. So, God, we thank you. Uh, I pray next week you would move uh, in the words that we'll speak. I pray for Brother Logan as he'll be leading Sunday morning in person. Uh, and, God, I thank you for bringing him on and giving him uh, um, a desire to, to, to be a leader, uh, one of these young leaders in our church and uh Lord, I, second or third time that he's teaching a lesson, and I'm so grateful for him, God, and your spirit is on him in a mighty way. Bless him, God. I pray you just give him your best grace and mercy um, as he studies and searches to, to give your word on Sunday morning. Uh, so, Lord, we thank you. Be with us. Uh, your grace and your mercy are enough. In Jesus' name, amen.